So for a couple of months, Tesla's employees have been testing full self-driving beta version 12, mostly in California, but it has slowly been rolling out to other employees all over the USA, and now it has even started to come to customers. Now this rollout is a little weird. It's different than rollouts of full self-driving beta we've had in the past. If you're not familiar, back in 2020, Tesla selected uh, some random testers or seemingly random testers to try out full self-driving beta in the public, and I was one of them. And for a while there, it was only this group of people that had full self-driving beta and then Tesla opened safety scores and if people had a good safety score they would get FSD beta and eventually it changed into what it is today whereas if you want FSD beta you just buy or subscribe to FSD you then opt in in the menu and say you accept all the terms and everything and that's it you have FSD beta in your car it's pre-installed on the car before you even take delivery whereas in the past you needed a software update it was very complicated well as of last week I made a video saying that very soon FSD beta was going to become to the public and I did get a lot of comments from you guys saying hi yeah right I've heard that before and here we are less than a week later and it is rolling out to more and more of the public now I don't have it yet and most people still don't have it but Omar from Homar's blog I will link his uh, channel down below has posted a couple of videos so far of FSD version 12 and we're gonna check that out and see some of the things where FSD looks improved and also hear from somebody I've talked to on X that also has full self-driving beta version 12 and their impressions so first up if you didn't see my last video you should definitely check that it as well because it has some pretty interesting insights uh, directly from employees so there is some stuff that won't be covered in this video but we have some new things to talk about here so first of all let's talk about this video from Omar and see some of these specific examples where FSD beta is looking really good but also he does have one complaint about the system so far as well so first of all at the one minute mark but in other parts of this video that you can see the car stopping at stop signs looks really good in terms of getting down to zero the car still has to get down to zero per NHTSA regulations and it will always do that at least as far as we know for now but what looks really good here is first of all the car is getting to zero pretty quickly whereas in the past and what a lot of people experience is that it would kind of take the car forever to get to that full stop and then after that the car as of today in the older versions will really hesitate sometimes getting out of that zero and then continuing on it'll creep really slowly and then move forward or just take forever to get through a turn or something well at least in this video all of that is looking really good the car is getting to zero pretty quickly and on top of that after after it gets to zero it is taking off from wherever its positioning is if it has to go right or left or whatever it's taking off really well and getting through that intersection getting through the maneuver really quickly which is great to see now right after this stop there's a really impressive move with a few fire trucks and firefighters in the road where the fire trucks they are off uh, parked on the side of the road so it's okay to drive past them of course you should just drive slowly and cautiously and it seems that's exactly what the car does here it slows down tremendously and it moves through it doesn't stop it doesn't get stuck it, I tried to look at the accelerator pedal. It doesn't look like that he is pushing the accelerator pedal here. I'm pretty sure this was a drive. The car did everything and he didn't intervene at all. But the car very slowly squeezes through the fire trucks and the other parked cars. There's even a firefighter in the road in front of the car and it waits until that firefighter moves out of the way and it proceeds past that. In my experience, these really tight situations could really leave the car kind of breaking and going and breaking and going, sometimes getting kind of stuck in that situation where you'd have to push it through, which to be fair, I'm fine with the car airing on the side of caution, but seeing it handle this situation correctly and safely was just awesome. Now at the 440 mark, there's a right turn that just looks so good to me. It's not a perfect right turn, there's no stop sign, but everything about it just looks so smooth. And I've experienced right turns like these in my driving, and again, it just seems like the car, when things are not a standard normal intersection with nobody around, will have a lot more hesitation. And in this one, the car slows down appropriately and it just makes the right as soon as it needs to. On top of that, the turn signal comes on really early to indicate to the cars around it what it is planning to do, but not too early. There's actually a possible right turn right before that. The car seems to wait until it really lines up with, it just barely passes that other turn it could make then it turns on the turn signal. So the car is not gonna confuse anybody and make them think that it's gonna turn on this street and then it keeps going. It waits till it passes that first option, turns the turn signal on kind of as soon as is appropriate, and then makes the turn. Turn signals, still, I can't wait to try this myself and try it in different scenarios, uh, but still to this day, turn signals are one of the worst parts of the FSD beta experience. The car will often change its behavior before it turns the turn signal on, meaning it will begin to slow or even start to turn sometimes or even start to change lanes before it uses the turn signal and it just drives 
drives me mad because it seems pretty simple. Of course, we're coding a whole car to drive by itself, but <laughs> let's not go too far. At least in these examples here, it's looking really good. Now at the 650 mark is a really cool maneuver. The car comes to a complete stop at a stop sign, which is you know looking really good throughout this video. But then a bus comes and turns and takes a really wide turn as buses need to do. And it seems like the car, even though it's already stopped, kind of moves over to get out of the way of the bus. And it just looked so human-like to me. Now, in current versions, the car is very good at moving out of the way uh, when there's tight streets and a big vehicle is coming by or something like that. But what struck me about this example is the car was already stopped. And as the bus came around, it's like the car saw it coming, again, so human-like, and was like, oh, I better scooch over here to give them a little more room. It did, everything worked out perfectly. Again, it was just really cool. Now it's seeming like a lot of these drives from Omar are zero intervention, zero disengagement. Unfortunately for us, I don't feel like it means that much. If you watch his videos and his channel, he very often already gets zero intervention and zero disengagement drives. Now being in California probably helps with that, but either way, having watched Omar for a long time and seeing lots of zero intervention drives is very exciting. It's very cool in my opinion, but we can't really see a huge leap in improvement if he's already getting, you know, those things happening uh, on his car. Now, one more thing I want to talk about that we've seen in Omar's videos. It's a separate video he posted on X, but the car has a new ability where it can actually pull over on the side of the road and park, which is something the car definitely cannot do now. One of the biggest things that full self-driving beta needs for our cars today is to be able to end a trip, to get somewhere and park itself so you can get out. As of now, you pretty much 99 or 100% of the time are getting to your destination, even if you have a zero intervention drive, you're then taking over to put the car where it needs to go. Well, now if there's street parking, it seems like that's kind of the only ability for now. If the pin is in the right place, the car is just gonna pull over and find a spot to park and just park right there on the side of the road. You can put it in park and get out. And that would be a true zero intervention drive where the car goes A to B with you doing nothing. So cool, can't wait to try this. In terms of parking lots, it doesn't seem that there's anything uh, happening there yet. Now, actually Smart Summon is in testing by employees, but it sounds like it's still a really small group of employees. It's not the full, you know, all the, all the employees that it goes to before it then goes to the public. But that is coming and that hopefully will bridge that last gap where you can get into a parking lot and the car will park itself in an actual parking space and then you can kind of go about your day. Now, unfortunately, one complaint that Omar did have is in the rain. So he said that highway testing of FSD version 12 in very heavy rain is not impressive. His speed was limited to 60 miles per hour and he kept getting the red hands which uh, basically forced him to take over. The car was saying it wasn't able to drive, please take over. Now, again, this is not something we've never seen before. Um, I often will have, I guess I shouldn't say often, but in heavy rain or heavy snow, my car will also limit the speed limit on the highway, which I actually think is a really cool feature. The car is basically like, hey, it's not safe to go 70 here. We're gonna have a max of 65. And I found in my experience, it's actually really good at that in terms of, yeah, the conditions really aren't good for going 70. Really, We really should be going 65. And the car, you know, kind of nails that and picks picks a really good speed. Sometimes cars around me are going faster, so it can be a little annoying. But for the most part, I feel like it works really well. Now, in heavy rain, I don't normally get disengagements, but it can happen here and there. And we did hear Elon say himself that precipitation is kind of tripping up version 12 so far. And that's part of why the rollout has been so slow. He said it's working really well in California, but when you get a lot of rain, and it's funny because San Diego doesn't get a lot of rain, but right now they're getting a ton of rain. <laughs> so for him to experience this is pretty funny. But that's what Elon was saying, rolling out to other parts of the country is maybe going to be a little slow as they get that uh, rain situation figured out. Now, I also did get a DM from a subscriber, thank you so much for sending that, who said he's in Utah and he has FSD version 12. Now, what's interesting here is for Omar, Omar said he got a phone call. Uh, I mean, I assume from Tesla, he just, he just said, got a phone call, I'm getting version 12, and then he got it a couple of hours later. Uh, what's interesting about that is back in the day, so back in 2020, when the first people were picked, Tesla did actually call us. They, they called us up and they said, hey, do you want to test this out? It can be, you know, a little sketchy. You have to pay full attention. You can do the wrong thing at the worst time. If you're okay with that and you want to be super safe and test this out, we'll push it to you. Otherwise, just decline and, you know, we'll move on to someone else. Obviously, I, I doubt anybody declined, but they actually called us. So it sounds like that happened to him. Now, my subscriber that was added to V12, uh, he did not get a phone call. It was just pushed to his car, and he actually only got his car last month. He is on, uh, I don't know what vehicle, but he's on Hardware 4, um, and he has Hardware 4, and these are his impressions. I'll just put a screenshot of you know what he said to me. But he said, overall, looking really good. He said it's working really well, but the max speed was kind of tripping him up. Elon Musk did say in his version 12 live stream back in August of 2023 that the max speed concept wasn't really needed in version 12. And this leads to another new ability covered by Omar, automatic speed 
speed offset is a brand new setting in the settings of FSD where you can let FSD pick the most natural speed for you. The automatic set speed offset allows autopilot to drive at the speed that it determines is most natural. This considers factors like road type, traffic flow, environmental conditions, speed limit, and the selected full self-driving beta profile, meaning chill, average, or assertive. Of course, the driver is always responsible for the speed of the vehicle, so you will need to intervene if the car is going a little too crazy. Because it's an AI, it's going to kind of make its own decisions in terms of that. So he said that it would always go the speed limit and go a, a, an appropriate speed, but if he set the max speed, you know, to 70, it would maybe go less than that. And as of today, if you have FSD beta, you know if you set a max speed, yeah, the car will sometimes slow down if it's going around a curve or conditions aren't the best, but it's going to be trying to go that max speed all the time, no matter what. If you're in a downtown and you set the max speed to 70, it's going to speed up uh, to 70, which obviously doesn't make much sense. Uh, so it sounds like in that aspect, version 12 is a little smarter. Uh, so we'll see how that works out uh, when we get it on our cars. Now, having mentioned that my subscriber and Omar are both on Hardware 4, cars. I think it's important to mention because a lot of people have been asking about Hardware 3. At this point, there seems to be no difference between Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 in terms of what softwares they're getting uh, or capabilities of the system. And it's also important to note that Hardware 3 vehicles got version 12 months ago and Hardware 4 vehicles just started getting version 12 in the past week or so. So no, Hardware 3, at least as of now, is not being left behind. Hardware 3 is actually getting features sooner than Hardware 4. So that should keep everyone at ease. It doesn't seem there's a huge difference, you know, for now between Hardware 3 and Hardware 4. So I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think that's going to be an issue at all, but I want to put that out there because people were asking. Uh, so yeah, Hardware 3 has had version 12 for much longer than Hardware 4 has at this point. Now, another great clip we saw from Omar is his version 12 vehicle stopping for children in a crosswalk. And what I really liked about this clip, now, of course, beta has been really good around pedestrians for a long time now. If anything, it's overly cautious around pedestrians. But in this clip, it seemed that the car started slowing really early for these children in the in the crosswalk to kind of show them like hey I'm slowing for you I see you there just as you would do as a person and when it did stop it didn't get very close to them it was a good distance away so that they felt safe and they knew the car was going to wait for them to cross the road one of my complaints now even though beta is very good and does move over for say a pedestrian somebody jogging in the road or it you know it stops for people in a crosswalk is number one it'll get close to the person a little too quickly the deceleration doesn't start soon enough and number two especially especially in my scenario where somebody is on the road. Yeah, the car moves over and gives them room, but it waits until kind of the last second to make that maneuver. Again, the car doesn't get too close to them, but it's just this comfort thing of both the driver and the uh, pedestrian in the road to kind of see like, all right, this person sees me, they're making a maneuver to get out of the way. I feel safe. I know that they're gonna, you know, have the correct driving behavior around me. So I hope to see a lot more of that with version 12.